Now, NewsHour science correspondent Miles O'Brien begins a two-part look at America's drinking water and the regulatory system that's supposed to guarantee its safety. His report is the result of a partnership with the Center for Public Integrity. It begins in the small desert town that made Aaron Brockovich a household name. Come on, you want some water? Can you get some water? Come on. Clean water so. is something most of us take for granted, but not Roberta Walker. She, her dogs, and her family drink spring water that is either bottled okay. or trucked in. Tup. Tup. Because where she lives, people can't drink the well water. Welcome to Hinkley, California. This was bought out, this home on the right. Um, this is all boarded up, so you can see how these are all boarded up. Yeah. Roberta drove me around town. What's left of it? There was a... Uh, there was a home here in the corner, mm -hmm. and that, of course, was is gone. Um, it's a ghost town. Yeah, yeah. The steady decline of Hinkley is rooted here at a natural gas pipeline pumping station owned by the giant California utility Pacific Gas and Electric. In the 1950s and 60s, PG&E admits it dumped 26 tons of a coolant made of chromium-6 into unlined retaining ponds here. The chemical is toxic and causes cancer. It leached into the soil and contaminated the aquifer, the drinking water in Hinkley. The Hollywood version of the story is writ large in the movie Aaron Brockovich, released in 2000. Julia Roberts won an Academy Award for her portrayal of a crusading legal assistant who forced PG&E into a $333 million settlement with the residents of Hinkley in 1996. But for Roberta, there was no Hollywood ending. So your house was right about here? Um, yes. PG&E did buy and raise her old home, as they did for many others here. So she built this place on the outskirts of town, out of harm's way, or so she thought. So far, PG&E has spent $700 million trying to clean up the stubborn mess. But the plume of chromium-6 tainted water persists. Cheryl Bilbrey is in charge of PG&E's remediation effort. Why is it taking so long? It's a very complex project. We are highly regulated. Um, there's a lot of interested parties. Um, the other thing is it's very important to us that we get it right. Recent testing shows there is still chromium-6 in the groundwater in Roberta Walker's neighborhood. It's less than it was in the bad old days, but Roberta is still girding to move once again, this time away from Hinkley. Did you ever think you'd ever have to deal with chromium-6 or PG&E again? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, in front of, in front of God and the world, they said they were going to clean it up. And? And they didn't. It was just, it's, it's just the shocker. For the real life Aaron Brockovich, it was also an unwelcome surprise. I thought it was being cleaned up. The state thought it was being cleaned up. The community thought it was being cleaned up. So here it is, 10 years later, I'm not paying attention because I thought it was all being handled. And how are people finding you, just by, through the social networking? Brakovich is now an environmental activist on a larger stage, curating a crowdsourced map of reported cancer clusters, which she says are largely linked to chromium-6 contaminated water nationwide. There is more and more mounting evidence of what chromium-6 does to the human health, what it does to the environment, what it does to the air. You know, every community that I deal with that has been exposed to chromium-6, they have the same health symptoms. They have the same problems. In 2010, a nonprofit advocacy organization, the Environmental Working Group, tested tap water in 35 U.S. cities. 31 of them were contaminated with chromium-6. Utility testing records show about 70 million Americans are drinking this tainted water. With evidence mounting that chromium-6 may be more dangerous than once thought, the Environmental Protection Agency decided to revisit the drinking water standard for the chemical. The standard, 100 parts per billion, was set 20 years ago. It is 5,000 times greater than the California EPA's public health goal for chromium-6 in drinking water, 0 0.02 parts per billion. Ann Mason is a senior director with the American Chemistry Council, which represents the chemical industry. The people in the United States 
our drinking water that meets the EPA safe drinking water level. So you, would you say categorically it's okay, Every, everybody's safe? I would say if the drinking water meets the safe drinking water level, that EPA has set that level and that's the rule of the land as we see it right now. But there is a lot of research that links chromium-6 in drinking water to cancer. In 2008, the National Institutes of Health weighed in with an eye-opening rodent study. It uncovered clear evidence that high doses of chromium-6 in drinking water cause cancer in rats and mice. Heather White is executive director of the Environmental Working Group. We think the science is clear. There's been a lot more research that we've seen over the last decade that shows that there is a big cause for concern about drinking hexavalent chromium, whether it be stomach cancer, whether it be liver damage, whether it be toxicity. There's even been studies that shows that it can have reproductive health effects. By the way, we had that water brought in special for you folks. It came from Well and Hinkley. <clears throat> After the Aaron Brockovich movie in 2000, California lawmakers decided life should imitate art. They chartered a so-called blue ribbon panel of scientists to help set a chromium-6 drinking water standard for the state. One of the scientists on the panel was this man, Dennis Postenbach. The NewsHour and the Center for Public Integrity learned the company he ran, ChemRisk, had been hired by Pacific Gas and Electric during the lawsuit. At the time, the most compelling scientific study that linked chromium-6 in drinking water to cancer came from China in 1987. It studied villagers in Liaoning province who lived near a chromium ore smelter and drank tainted water for years. The lead author, Dr. Zhang Jingdong, found they had increased rates of stomach cancer. Acting on behalf of its client, PG&E, ChemRisk paid Zhang to redo his study. And this is our final witness um, on this hearing. Postenbach offered this explanation before the California you, Senate. After he saw the questions that we raised about the analysis, he went back and examined and said, of course not, it can't be true. My original conclusions don't make sense. The revised study reversed the original conclusion that chromium-6 was the likely cause of the villagers developing cancer. Scientists at the California Environmental Protection Agency were skeptical and took a look at the underlying data themselves. Mm -hmm. Alan Hirsch is with Cal EPA. The, the original study itself, was it good science? Well, our analysis, uh, which we completed in 2008, agreed with the original 1987 paper. And we found that the rates of stomach cancer in these five villages were significantly higher than stomach cancer rates in the overall province. The California EPA set its public health goal of 0 0.02 parts per billion in 2011. The next step, changing the drinking water standards, has not happened. There's been a fair amount of study about hexavalent chromium over the years. Mm -hmm. Is the, isn't the scientific jury in? I don't think so. Um, there's a lot of scientists that are still debating that question. Uh, I think that's why the process has taken so long from what, from what I've read both at EPA and at the state level. So I think they're still trying to figure out exactly what is the right uh, answer there. Back in Hinckley, I got a tour of the massive PG&E cleanup project. Kevin Sullivan is the engineer in charge. See, this barrier is about a half mile long. They are pumping ethanol into the ground, which converts chromium-6 into a more benign form of the chemical called chromium-3. They've also planted acres of alfalfa that is irrigated with the tainted water. The rich organic soil also makes the conversion. That's now chromium-3 in your hand. Exactly. There is so much alfalfa, the utility now owns a thriving dairy farm. But since the ethanol injections began, a new problem seems to have surfaced. Residents have started reporting elevated levels of arsenic and manganese in their wells. PG&E says it occurs naturally and has always been there. Nevertheless, when Sullivan appears at community meetings here... These are concentrations of over 100, okay? And we wanted to cut that off right there. There is dirty water on the table and angry accusations in the air. The community is in an uproar right now. We're not just being poisoned by chromium. We got high arsenic levels, manganese. All this can lead you to believe that PG&E really don't give a crap about any one of you. 
I don't want to live here. I don't want my family here. I have no choice. No one will buy my home. Who wants to move into this? <laughs> but Sullivan insists they're making progress. We've cleaned up like 54 acres. Now, I know that doesn't, I, I believe me, I understand that if it's not your property, you know, what have you done for me lately? But 54 acres is a lot of progress in terms of getting this cleanup. We have a lot longer to go, but these are positive signs that we've been able to achieve in the last few years. But Sullivan says it will be at least another 40 years before they're done with the cleanup here. It seems nothing moves quickly when the wells are poisoned. In part two of his report on Friday, Miles takes a closer look at the Environmental Protection Agency's system for regulating toxic chemicals in the environment. Online, we go behind the scenes in Hinkley, and you can also check out chromium levels in the water of 31 U.S. cities.